boys and girls, it's Mrs. B, and I have your art club video for the week. I have absolutely loved hearing about and getting to see the work that you have made using our art club videos and your supply kits at home. It's been so nice to know that even though we can't be together at Goodwin for art club, you're still having fun and getting to make art for fun at home. This week's art club project is an up close, positive and negative space painting of birch trees. Now we have birch trees in Old Saybrook. Um, there is a hiding preserve on the top of Ingham Hill Road called the Preserve and it's between Essex and Old Saybrook and you can go hiking there and see some birch trees. You can also see them at Clark Memorial Park and I think there's some um, at the Great Cedars hiking trails as well. So if you are somebody who likes to hike, you can take a look at them in person with your family. Maybe you have some near your yard where you live. If not, you can have a grown up help you look up pictures of birch trees in the fall on the computer and there's lots and lots of great choices. Here are a few that I found um, using Google image search. So we're going to start by drawing the outline of the birch tree trunks. And they're very, very straight. They just go straight up and down. They don't have a lot of tree branches coming off of them. The tree branches that are coming off are really small. So the trunks just look like big white sticks. The texture of them is a little bit bumpy. It, they have lines across them and wherever a branch grew or continues to grow, there's some darker black. So they have lines and then they have kind of these, they almost look like eyes to me, like that one right there really almost looks like it's an eyeball. It's like a half moon shape with a circle. So your job first is going to be to take out your gray crayon and your black crayon. I like to start drawing them with the gray crayon and then trace over my gray lines with my black crayon when I'm sure it's just how I want it. I also like to go back with the gray crayon and make some of the texture lines with both colors. So your first job is just to draw the shapes of the trees and add the lines for texture. Now this painting part is gonna take two steps. Step one is shading your birch trees to make them look three dimensional. So for that, I'm gonna put lots of water on my brush. I dip it in the water, gently brush it on there. Take just a tiny bit of my black paint, get a little water. So I did water, paint, water, and I'm gonna paint it on the tree right down the side. I'm going to spread it out with more water to make it shaded. And I'll do this along the side. I'm going to do it on the side of the tree. To make it look like it has a shadow. So I'm trying to make my tree look a little bit more three dimensional. And the water is how we lighten it. So in watercolor paints, even though there's white paint in there, white's not really a color we use when we're using watercolors. When we use watercolors, the water is the light color. So if you wanna lighten your watercolor paints, using water is the best way to do that and it makes it look the most realistic. So you can see I hardly used any black paint at all. I used just the tiniest bit and that was enough to shade an entire birch tree. And it's darker at the bottom and it gets lighter as it goes up. So your first job after you draw your birch trees, you're gonna take your black paint and you're going to shade all your trees. After this has dried, you're going to go in with your fall colors around your trees. Now in art, we have something called positive space and negative space. Positive space is the space inside of shapes. So the shapes I drew are the shapes of the birch tree trunks. So the shape's positive space is inside the trunk. So I just painted in the positive space with my black paint and I colored inside there with my black and gray crayons. The space that's left over, the space in between the trees, is called the negative space. The positive space is inside the shape. The negative space is the leftover shapes. So in here, this is my negative space. I have a cool shape here created 
by the leftover space. I have a little triangle shape here. So you're going to fill your negative space with the fall colors, just like in the photo. So when you do this, you're gonna let this dry completely, all of the black shading that you've done before you do your fall colors. If you don't, you might get some areas that even though we did crayon as our border and you guys know that wax and watercolor don't mix, if you accidentally touch a little red to this, it's gonna bleed inside your tree because it's wet watercolor. So I'm gonna paint on this side where I don't have any black paint to show you. But when I made mine, I painted inside my trees and then I let it dry and then I did my fall colors afterwards. So when we're doing our fall colors, you can really use anything you see in real life. So there's some green, there's some yellow, there's a little purple, orange. I'm gonna do some yellow to start. So I paint in my negative space with my fall colors. Start with some bright yellow. The nice thing is, because this is kind of abstract, it doesn't matter if it looks exact. You can let your colors mix together because they all go together. So I'm gonna mix in some darker yellow now. some up here and we're going to use a wet on wet watercolor technique so I have wet watercolor and when your watercolor is wet you can easily blend in other wet colors kind of like you did with your leaf painting last week so I'm using that technique again to mix my watercolors now the really neat thing is when you have wet watercolor you can sprinkle it with salt and the salt will create little blooms that add a really neat texture to your watercolor surface. So I, when it's really wet, just like this, I'm gonna take just a little salt, just regular old kitchen salt, and I'm gonna sprinkle that salt, just a tiny, tiny bit, a few grains on my wet paint. And then I'll do another section. So I stopped painting because I don't want it to dry or the salt won't work. The paint has to be really wet for the salt to work. And the more water you add when you're painting with this, the better. So I did my watercolor, it's really wet, and I am sprinkling on my salt. And then I let it dry. So you're gonna continue to fill all your negative space with fall colors after you have shaded your birch tree trunks. And you can sprinkle salt on if you have some handy at home, if you wanna try our texture technique with salt, and you're going to get a beautiful fall birch forest. This is a really, really fun project for the fall. I hope you have a great time trying it out. And if you have any birch trees at your house and you wanna show me a picture, I would love to see them in real life, or I'd love to see your art or both. Let me know if you have any questions and have a great time using your watercolor paints and your crayons this week for Art Club. Bye, see you next week.